Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna compare these three Rei routers to each other. So we have the RGE4 right here, the RGE5, and the RGE6. We'll take a closer look at the ports. We'll talk about their speed test, range test, which I have all those numbers here. I have tested with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and I've also tested with the Galaxy S23 Ultra and OnePlus 11, but I have since upgraded those phones to the newer models. So not quite tested with these phones, but the previous versions of these two. Starting with the E4, it's a nice minimalistic design. So on the antennas, these side two are exactly the same in terms of the way they move. So you could move them this way and this way. The top three are the same where they just move front to back essentially. They can't go sideways. And because this is wall mountable, you could actually place the top three antennas like this and bend these like this or like this. Uh, An antenna placement actually can make a fairly big difference. Not huge, but big enough that antenna placement is important. As you guys can see, it is wall mountable and there's a lot of vents on the bottom helping it keep it cool. So we have four ports, they are all gigabit ports. We have a dedicated WAN port, so your internet uh, would go here. Basically, this would connect to your modem, and then the three other ports, you're free to connect to other devices or to a switch to expand your ports. We have the power port, factory reset, and we have the Ray mesh button. So if you have another Ray compatible device, just like the E5 and the E6, you can actually combine them together to create a mesh system out of it. And this is a dual band with a speed rating of AX3000. Next, we'll look at the, a, the E5, I was going to say the AX3200, but that's the speed rating. So a slightly faster speed rating on the E5. Antennas are a bit different. This one is not wall mountable, and pretty much the antennas just move up and down like this. And that's about it for pretty much all of them. So uh, we have the, I believe this is the Ray mesh button up here as well. And then the bottom, it's not wall mountable, as you guys could see right there. And let's take a look at the port. So this one has one additional port, so it has five ports. Also, all of them are still gigabit ports. And again, we have a dedicated WAN, which stands for Wide Area Network. Uh, so this is where your modem would connect to, and then you're free to use any of these LAN ports, local area network, to connect your devices or to a switch. We have the power port and we have a factory reset. And again, this is a dual band, just like the E4. Next, we get to the E6, which does have the, uh, the Ray mesh button up here. So this one looks a little bit more, um, it's kind of a more, uh, I guess a different design. Um, it kind of looks like like a big X, kind of looks like an X-Men kind of thing to me. Um, but I mean, you guys let me know. I kind of like the design. Uh, the antennas just move like this. That's, that's pretty much it. So you can't twist them or anything like that. Uh, this one is also wall mountable, as you guys can see here. Lots of vents on the bottom to keep it run nunning, running. <laughs> I'm like nunning, uh, running nice and cool. And we have five ports. And uh, the difference is that the WAN port actually supports up to 2.5 gigabits. Um, and again, the, the modem would have to go here. And then you have four other ports. It does support link aggregation right here. Uh, we have the power port and a factory reset. And this one is a tri-band with a faster rating, speed rating of AX6000. So I tested all three of these individually as my main router. I have 80 or so devices. I have smart home devices, tablets, you know, laptops, desktops, uh, phones, and a bunch of other stuff basically that requires Wi-Fi, cameras and stuff obviously, um, that require Wi-Fi or ethernet. And all three of these had no issues with those amount of devices. Now, um, just uh, pretty much one thing that was kind of surprised me was that I got really good range out of them, especially this budget one, the E4. Uh, it, it actually performed better than what I was expecting, and I really think the antennas help out quite a bit with that. But I was genuinely surprised how well, uh, specifically, the E4 did. These did uh, fine as well, but for the price, wow, like E4 did uh, really, really well for the range test. But generally speaking, Ray routers have pretty good range, better than what I was expecting. So now let's jump into internet speed test. And as you guys know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, unless of course the router itself can't handle those speeds, which in my case 
all three of these cannot. So my internet speeds are five gigabits per second upload and download, and these two are limited to gigabit speeds, and this one's limited to 2.5. So as soon as I connect to this, I'm capping my internet speeds right away. Uh, and all three of these with an ethernet connected device like my computer, when I do the speed test, I do get those full speed with ethernet devices. With Wi-Fi devices, that's a different story, so obviously much slower. Uh, so with the E4, I got the slowest of the speeds. With the E5, uh, I got better speeds. And with the E6, I got a lot better speeds, but again, nowhere near their maxes. So as a result, I do local speed tests. And what I do is I make my computer to the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer, isolating the router. So this way I get rid of my ISP, I get rid of the public speed test server, which can be busy at times. And it really depends on which server you're connected to. And I've done a whole setup video on this. I do use Open Speed Test Server, which is fantastic and it's pretty easy to use, but I'll put the video link if you guys wanna know how to set that up. So looking at these speeds, there is a drastic improvement in speeds, uh, especially in the download sections for the E4, um, the E5 as well. You could tell like they're capping right around uh, gigabit speeds in terms of the local speeds. And the E6, you might be wondering, well, why did the E6 slow down? Well, the issue with the E6 is that it only has one 2.5 gigabit port. And so that's not the port I'm using to go to my computer. So my computer is going to the gigabit port. So I'm, autom I'm automatically going to be capped to just under gigabit speeds. Next, we jump into the range test. So at 20 feet away, all three of these were doing fantastic, uh, especially the E4 considering its price, but hardly a drop because I'm inside my place. At 50 feet outside my place, they all started to drop. However, even though the E6 was doing the best, which is what I would expect, the E4 was actually doing very, very well considering its price, even beating out the E5, even though the E5 cost more. Now, at 100 feet, this is where the E4 started to really shine because, again, it was doing very, very well, not too far off from the E6. Again, the E6 did the best overall. But considering the price, the E4 was doing very, very well. And all three of these can go farther than 100 feet, but I did start capping my test to 100 feet. Uh, and again, range tests will vary by location. So if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, you know, pretty much more obstructions typically equals less range, and range will vary drastically by location. Now for setup and configuration, you use the Ray app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. You can also go to a browser, type in a default gateway, and access more settings from there. Now, uh, they all have the basic stuff, you know, the main Wi-Fi, the guest Wi-Fi. They also have an Internet of Things Wi-Fi, which is becoming more and more common. And the E6 specifically has a game Wi-Fi SSID you could set up. So um, there is that additional option here. But for the most part, they're all pretty similar to each other in terms of options. You can actually reduce your Wi-Fi signal strength during certain times. Now I have seen you can reduce your Wi-Fi signal strength with some other brands like Asus. Uh, however, I didn't see a schedule for it. Now they call this radiation control, um, but basically what it does is, let's say you're sleeping from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., for example, <clears throat> and you don't want the Wi-Fi signal strength to be as strong, uh, but you still want to have Wi-Fi because let's just say you have a couple of security cameras, you still want Wi-Fi signal for them. You could actually reduce the signal strength during those times, uh, and then in the morning, you could come back to full strength in case you want to uh, you know, browse things faster or whatever. Uh, so that is something that these have, and it's the schedule of it that I haven't seen. Uh, you can also turn off the Wi-Fi during a certain schedule, which I have seen with other brands. These do support VPN. And one other thing worth mentioning is that the parental controls for this are super, 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 super basic. So you basically pick a device and then you could block the internet for that device or you could block it during a certain schedule and that's about it. So in the end, which one is worth getting and why? Uh, and it always comes back to, well, which one is the right one for you? So obviously if you have internet speeds faster than gigabit, I would rule these two out. I would only look at this one uh, if you were considering Ray. Uh, this one is pretty good for the price, uh, 
Got some solid numbers, solid range, uh, solid speed. Uh, overall, a pretty good router considering the price. Now, if your internet speeds are up to gigabit, then you obviously, you, you know, you have more choices because you could either go with this one, which will still provide v fairly fast speeds. Uh, but then the question of budget comes into play. It's like, well, if this one, for instance, is only 20% better than this one, is it worth paying double the price for it or more than double the price for it? So it really just kind of depends. And then sometimes they do go on sale. So I have seen the E6 go on sale uh, certain times. So it really just depends on what the price is. But as a general statement, I do have to say Ray's strengths are that there was no signal drop, which was fantastic. Uh, and they have really, really good range for the price. But let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button. I have way more router reviews coming up, mesh systems, and, and pretty much a lot of network-related things. So with that, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.